Hey, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man. Not Jeep Audio Man, not Chief Audio Man, the Cheap Audio Man. Here at the Cheap Audio Man, we don't feel like audio equipment, speakers, DACs, amps, amplifiers, headphones, headphone amps, turntables, uh, should cost as much as a really, really nice funeral for your loved one. So when you, you give your dead loved one to the undertaker and they do them all up with the makeup, pop them in the casket, which isn't just a pine box, it's one of the good caskets with the nice lining. They look okay and the people filter through, see your loved one during the open casket funeral and then you put them in the ground with the chiseled headstone and then you celebrate their life. And when you get the invoice, look down at the bottom, bottom number on the invoice shouldn't be greater than your stereo system. And these don't, these are, it's awesome time today at the Cheap Audio Man, these are the Polk Reserve R100. It's a brand new speaker. So grab a cup of coffee, sit down, and let's talk about the Polk Reserve R100. Very exciting. Hank's Free Range Pomeranians has decided to sponsor a new video. Not only are they free range, now they're gluten free. When you demand zero wheat byproducts from your Pomeranians, there's only one choice, and that's Hank's free range and now gluten free Pomeranians. The free range and gluten free Pomeranians are just better. Okay, all right, now go. Go somewhere else. There you go. She didn't care for that. All right, Polk R100. Let's talk about some specs. First, let's talk about my history with Polk. Um, Polk is obviously a household name when it comes to audio products, and I have owned and continue to own a bunch of them. So my first system, like kind of major, like good system, was the RTI. So RTI A3 and a whole bunch of other RTI speakers still have it. It's upstairs in my son's bedroom. He listens to it all the time. Shakes the the uh, ceiling, which is um, his floor. Um, anyway, also had the uh, T15s, and funny enough, the actual the Polk R100s are sitting on top of the Polk T15 speaker stands. All right. Also had a TSI 100, great speaker. All right. So let's talk about some specs. Frequency response on these is, okay, so there's basically two specs. One is probably an anechoic, negative 3 dB, and then the other one's, I think, typical in room. So negative 3 dB is 58 up to 39K. Overall, probably in room, 44 uh, to 50K. All right, pretty high. Um, and I believe it. Uh, I think they went well down into the, into the 40s. But we'll talk about that in the base. They have a one inch ring radiator tweeter okay looks pretty cool there's a little silver pointy thing in the middle uh looks kind of like uh i don't know uh raiders of the lost ark uh beginning scene indiana jones running through there and then the, <laughs> and they're flying across the room i imagine uh, that's what uh the projectiles look like that this uh, tweeter has but don't worry um in all my experience listening to these for the last uh month or so not once did it shoot the projectile at me. Okay. The woofer is a five and a quarter inch turbine cone. What does that mean? There's a whole bunch of science with it. Whole bunch of science with the tweeter. Whole bunch of science with the port. It's rear ported, okay? So if you have any experience with Polk, uh, the S series, their port kind of looked, I don't know, kind of like a funnel uh, shoved into the speaker and then, you know, the air would flow out around it or whatever, okay? This one looks more kind of like a, I don't know, jet turbine type of a thing. So the cool thing is, is not only does all this science actually work, um, it reduces resonances. The tweeter, uh, the way it's built, reduces resonances around the 2.5 kilohertz area, which is good because you don't want stuff to resonate at that point because it can be unpleasant, okay? The base, uh, 
eliminates or not eliminates reduces kind of like the breakup in the base which can happen and then cause even more issues higher up in the frequency range okay so the bottom line is there is a whole bunch of science and I kind of make fun of speakers with their you know patented technology um, does it work um, in this case I'll say that it probably does okay but I'm not gonna ruin it all right let's talk about soundstage and imaging okay soundstage and imaging um was a little worried and the only reason I was worried is because the RTI series um, doesn't soundstage and image very well okay now I think that's a design consideration I think they're designed to be on the wall whatever the S series the S20 specifically not the S15 the S20 specifically sound stage stages and images better than the RTI series but um, not great for its price okay so I tested these as usual in three different rooms um, actually four so in my office and that's more of a near field listening and then in my bedroom which is a bit bigger room but it's very consistent with the way the room is built um has you know the sidewalls are equidistant from uh the speakers uh upstairs living room that's a little bit like it's not as consistent all right and i will say that the soundstage and imaging in every situation was great um, wherever I may roam, Metallica at the 14 second mark out of the right speaker, you should hear, came way right. All right. I had these not towed in directly at me, just towed out ever so slightly. More human than human, Rob Zombie. At the beginning, there's electronic noises, and it goes back and forth between the speakers, okay? Not only did it go back and forth, not only did it start dead center and then start to ping pong back and forth, I actually heard it go a bit outside the speakers. Uh, Chocolate Chip Trip by Tool. If you've never heard that song on a pair of good sound staging and imaging speakers, highly recommend it. When I was in the upstairs living room, it was all the way around me. Okay? Killing Strangers, Marilyn Manson. Boom, 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 boom. And then if you have really good imaging speakers and you're in the right room, it'll be like that last titch of reverb comes all around you. All right. Well done. Well done. Probably the best soundstage and imaging speaker I've heard in the price range, with the exception of maybe the ELAC uh, Unify UB52. But they're the same. Okay. They're the same. All right. Let's talk about bass. Bass. Bass on these, um, great. Okay. So, from a roll off perspective, I use Intergalactic by the Beastie Boys. That song gives you an idea when you're using bookshelf speakers without a sub, uh, it gives you an idea. If it's a good roll-off speaker, if it has good bass roll-off, it'll give you an idea of how big, how much bass is in that song. And if you don't believe me, uh, if you have a subwoofer, listen to that song with your subwoofer on, turn the subwoofer off, and then listen to it just through your speakers, you know, full range, of course, and see if you get the same experience. You're not going to get the same experience, but if the bookshelf speakers give you an idea that, oh, whoa, this song is going to the basement, uh, express train on the basement with the broken elevator if that's if it gives you that idea then it has great bass roll off okay oftentimes when the speaker has great bass roll off it doesn't mean it means that it doesn't always have great bass presence <laughs> punchy okay not these these are quite punchy they're very nice killing strangers gives you an idea how punchy because it while the killing strangers does have good bass roll off too but the beginning Ba bomb ba 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 should be right in your face okay oftentimes when a when a speaker has good punch it's not very neutral all right how i know that is by listening to highway to hell by acdc the bass drum not the kick drum the bass drum 
at the beginning should be real tight and not thick. All right, it's perfect. All right, real neutral. Tonally, very good as well. Dumb by Nirvana. Um, the bass line in the beginning, very good. All right, is it as good as the best? So I would say overall the bass performance from a roll off, from a punch standpoint, and from a tone, like all three of those is as good as I've ever heard it from a speaker. I've heard a bit better presence, but then it has no roll off. I've heard better roll off, but then it has no presence. I've heard better tonal characteristics of the bass, more detail, but it doesn't have any of the other three. All right. So overall, um, three for three, not the three best, not like the best tone, but it does the best all around bass that I've heard out of a speaker. Um, maybe Elac debut reference, maybe about the same, about the same, about the same. Let's talk about mid range. <laughs> Mid-range, again, um, awesome, okay? I didn't feel like it was recessed at all. Uh, there will be time, Mumford & Sons. Um, voice was great, uh, plenty of detail, no resonances at the, the upper end of the male vocals. Female vocals, Hello by Adele, was great. Uh, Shoot to Thrill by ACDC came in crunchy, yet had body, and was awesome, all right? I've got no complaints about the mid-range. Um, everything felt great. Everything felt good. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I don't have anything else to say. Let's talk about treble. Um, trebles, again, fantastic. I have heard more clarity, but that comes from like a, a ribbon tweeter or something like that. Mm. You know, this trouble is, I don't know. I don't know how to say it. It's just, it's perfect. It's not, okay, so it's not like a, like a titanium, like a klipsch. It's not like a soft dome, like, um, like ELAC. I don't know. It's just good. And there's no fatigue. Okay, so here, the treble is very similar to the ELAC Unify UB52. And that speaker you can turn way up, and I didn't even think about it, but there's still clarity, there's still great clarity, but there's no fatigue. And that's exactly uh, what it's like with the R100. It's just, I don't know. It's just great. It's not overdone in any area. It's just very balanced very neutral, very clean, very clear, not rolled off, not bumped. It's just good. It's great. Center man, Nina Simone, 16th notes at the beginning. Um, do they sound like they're in the room? Yeah. Yeah, they did. Um, another way to die, uh, Jack White, not Jack Black, Alicia Keys. Speaking of keys, at the beginning, there's a piano coming out of the Right speaker. Good way to tell if a speaker has good treble is how realistic uh, the uh, piano sounds. Sounded realistic. Okay. That's great. What are my final thoughts? Final thoughts on the Polk reserve r100 is this is the best polk speaker that's affordable i think i've ever heard personally um the cool thing is they i think i don't think i know they brought down a lot of the uh technology like the driver tech from the legend series down to the reserve series and i read that uh they saved costs um, from the enclosure and from uh, the um, crossover okay when the legend was released i remember the polk did this really cool marketing campaign and i was i've been a, on their uh, email list for a long time 
I got super excited and it was like a dark and it showed like kind of an outline of the speaker. And then, uh, there was like a countdown. This is when it's going to be released. And then, you know, they released it. And then I was like, Oh, because I looked at the price and the prices were just ridiculous. At least for me, for some people, fine, whatever. But for me, it was just totally out of like, there's no way I could get those. No way. Uh, the LSI series kind of similar for me just completely out of reach so it, th those both those speakers were just non-starters for me for Polk and then my I don't know my relationship with the T series which I just don't think are very good the T15 aren't very good I know to be fair I haven't heard the towers or, or whatever um, the S series I thought the S15 was veiled bloated muddy on the bottom just not good at all the S20s I thought were pretty good um, and they were big they dug deep but I felt like they just weren't refined they were fun kind of like a party speaker all right this is the first speaker and I didn't know what to think and first of all I was very excited that I was gonna get to listen to these before they were released but I was like oh, I, I this is what I, I hope they're good that's what I thought is I hope these are good because I didn't want to give I haven't been like super kind to Polk. This is like, um, this is a refined speaker. All right. When Andrew Jones designed the ELAC B6 and kind of raised the bar for affordable speakers about what they can do, you know, I think, I don't know if that is what caused everybody to kind of up their game or if everybody was up in their game anyway. But this speaker goes toe to toe with anything that uh, ELAC is making in the in this price range. Not only does it go to toe to toe with anything that ELAC is making, it's prettier and it's built better at the same price. The thing that surprised me most about this speaker is the ELAC Unify UB52 is kind of my de facto recommendation for a neutral speaker at the $600 price range or below. Not anymore. Okay, is it great? Absolutely, but so is this one. And here's the thing, the R100 only has two drivers and it's doing just about everything just as good as the UB52 and it's better looking, okay? It's fantastic. The base, only in the largest of rooms are you not gonna be able to get away with this one. There's also a six and a half inch version. It's more expensive. Um, <clears throat> But here's the thing about Polk's pricing too. Most of the time, stuff isn't always selling at MSRP. They run specials and things like that. So at $600, do I recommend this speaker? Yes, I do. Um, it's fantastic. This became, this speaker, um, it's 86 dB uh, sensitivity. It's pretty low impedance. I didn't mention that, it's like four ohms, okay? I was running this off of a tube amp a six watt tube amp and it was a fantastic pairing and I got it as loud as I needed it with off of just six watts um, I also ran it off of more uh, powerful stuff like the a 300 by Emotiva which is like a 300 uh, yeah I think it's 150 watts into four ohms or something like that 300 no 300 into four 150 into eight whatever um, it was great okay um, it always sounded good when I put a uh, tube on it, everything got more holographic and, and deeper and things like that. That's another thing about this speaker is from a soundstage and imaging point, it's absolutely the most refined Polk I've ever heard. Um, vertical imaging with, uh, hello by Adele, um, depth of imaging with, uh, there will be time by Mumford and Sons good there's i don't have any negative thing to say about this speaker at its price point none again uh de facto recommendation it this or the elac unify ub52 are going to be my recommendations at 600 dollars or below and this one's prettier and it's only a two-way okay there's matching towers there's matching center fantastic well done polk well done, like you care what I think. If you like what we're doing here, consider subscribing. Like the video if you like it. I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash cheapaudioman. You can support me there on Sunday nights. We have patron-only Zooms. 
We also occasionally have uh, patron-only content. Any of my uh, links in the description are normally affiliate links, which means I get a, um, I almost said subscription, I get a commission if you click on those and you buy through there. Uh, also, you can sign up for Amazon HD Music for free. <laughs> click on the link in the description, scroll down to the bottom, click Try HD. You get three months for free. I get a couple of dollars. Also, I have merchandise if you want to buy it, okay? So, really impressed with what Polk did here, all right? I don't even know where I'm going to link this because I don't know if they're going to be available on Amazon or where they are, if it's pre-order or what it is anyway. But don't binge watch Netflix or Hulu or anything. Binge listen to your favorite streaming service, CD, record, whatever it is, and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.